get into certain places, you'd find out what the Air Force and the government knows about UFOs. I see a, this glowing red object flying very fast uh, across the sky. Wright Field, which is currently known as Wright-Patterson Air Force Base and is located outside of Dayton, Ohio, is a subject of persistent speculation for the same reason as Area 51 is. It served as the headquarters of the government's UFO investigation program, known as Project Blue Book, from 1951 until 1969. Many of the stories surrounding Wright-Pat revolve around what happened within a specific structure known as Hangar 18. UFO enthusiasts think the government buried actual evidence from their investigations, such as flying saucer debris, extraterrestrial remains, and even captured aliens in this enigmatic warehouse, notably within a sealed, well-guarded spot known as the Blue Room. So does Hangar 18 actually exist? Are there any credible people that can attest to its authenticity? And what exactly is Hangar 18? To find out, Join us in today's video as we unravel the mystery of Hangar 18 and what lies within it. From March 1952 through December 17, 1969, Project Blue Book was the code name for the United States Air Force's systematic examination of unexplained flying objects. It was established in the aftermath of numerous UFO sightings during the Cold War era in order to explain away or debunk as many reports as possible in order to reduce potential panic and shield the public from a genuine national security problem. An apparently technological phenomenon that was beyond human control and was not Russian but represented an unfathomable potential threat. Captain Edward J. Ruppelt initially oversaw the project, which followed comparable projects such as Project Sign, which began in 1947, and Project Grudge, which began in 1948. Project Blue Book had two goals, to evaluate whether UFOs posed a threat to national security and to conduct scientific analysis of UFO-related data. Thousands of UFO reports were gathered, investigated and filed. By the end of Project Blue Book, it had collected 12,618 UFO claims and decided that the majority of them were misidentifications of natural occurrences or conventional aircraft. According to the National Surveillance Office, a few of the reports could be explained by flights of the formerly secret reconnaissance planes U-2 and A-12, but 701 reports remained unexplained, even after thorough investigation. The UFO reports have been stored and are available under the Freedom of Information Act, but all witnesses' names and other personal information have been redacted. This, however, gets us to Hangar 18. The mystery surrounding Hangar 18 is that in July 1947, something truly amazing occurred at Roswell, New Mexico. A flying disc was said to have crashed, leaving a one-mile-long wreckage field. After alarming reports about a disc from outer space appeared in newspapers, the government made a huge deal out of claiming it was all a hoax. They displayed images of weather balloon scraps, fake debris was allegedly strewn on the field to help the government's cover story. The actual debris was carried away and landed at Wright Field in Dayton, Ohio. Shortly after the Roswell incident in March, another incident occurred near Aztec, New Mexico. Oil workers on a mesa spotted another disc. It did not crash, but instead landed safely. A few daring oil workers mustered the courage to gaze through a broken porthole. All of the strange bodies inside were hunched over. There were between 14 and 16 residents, all of whom had perished in the fire. Trucks were quickly dispatched from a base in Colorado to transport the disc, bodies and debris. The oil employees were sworn in and told that it was their American civic responsibility to remain silent. The material was also carried off to Wright Field in Ohio. These were not the only two disc incidents. There were a number of them. Two collisions occurred in Arizona, one in Laredo, Texas, and one in Kecksburg, Pennsylvania. All of these are alleged to have had extraterrestrial bodies or aircraft debris retrieved and sent to Wright Field. The secret activities at Wright Field were not only for the preservation and examination of alien remains, there was also a later declassified operation known as Project Moondust at Wright-Patterson. This program's goal was to collect all debris from non-US aviation travel, including debris from foreign countries, outer space, and even unknown origins. 
There it would undergo a process of reconstruction before being reverse engineered in order to produce superior planes and weaponry for the armed forces. They needed to be kept top secret in order to protect the lives of those military men who could employ them in the future. The program that was focused on reverse engineering techniques was known as the Foreign Technology Division. Marion Magruder was a member of an Air War College class that was flown to Wright Field in July 1947, shortly after Roswell, to investigate the disc debris and alien situation. Magruder did not speak a single word about this occurrence until a short time before he passed away, when his son and granddaughter persuaded him to finally relieve himself of this burden. Magruder had indicated that the Air War College participants had been sworn to secrecy under the threat of court-martial. When ufologist Leonard Stringfield made a speech at MUFON in 1978, he claimed that he had been establishing a network of government witnesses, leakers, who had all kinds of interesting information regarding what was going on in Hangar 18. He guarded them and managed all of their accounts. They couldn't go public because it would jeopardise their top secret government positions. Leonard wrote multiple books, but his versions could not be confirmed since the witnesses refused to go on record using their true identities. He occasionally told the stories using simply first names or pseudonyms. The aliens mentioned to him had four lengthy fingers with webbing between them. The little visitors had gigantic heads, long arms, big eyes and slits for mouths. Both the nostrils and the ears were holes. A source who identified himself only as PJ said he had been removed from the premises twice by armed security personnel. It was later revealed that Hangar 18 was actually many different locations at Wright Field. The hangar was housed in Building 23 and beneath, vaults were linked by tunnels. The aliens' bodies were stored in cryogenic capsules in deep vaults. People working there said they probably had to wait a few years before they were smart enough to study them properly. There was a worker at Wright-Patterson named June Crane who worked as a clerk typewriter and she had some fascinating stories to tell. She had access to sensitive papers dating back to the 1950s. She read in a document that two of the aliens had been placed in an icebox. She also revealed that the little green aliens were around four feet tall and greenish blue in colour. June was asked to sign a confidentiality document stating that she would maintain the confidentiality of the information. But when she turned 72, she made the decision to share her experience. She believed she was too old to be treated brutally. There was also Senator Barry Goldwater, who was once so intrigued by the reports of aliens and UFOs that he requested that General LeMay grant him access to the records and artefacts. LeMay became enraged and warned him not to bring it up again. So what did Marion Magruder finally tell his family about what he had witnessed? He told them that he had seen the alien bodies and knew one of them was still alive. He called it squiggly. He said to his family, it was alive, but we killed it. It was a shameful thing that the military destroyed this creature by conducting tests on it. He then explained to his stunned family that it was not on purpose. There was no way of knowing how to heal the alien's injuries. The authorities did everything, but their efforts were not life-saving. It would seem very odd if all these things told by different people were totally fabricated and there must be some truth to some of it. Even after Project Blue ended in 1969, speculations about Wright Pat persisted. According to the Tampa Tribune, a Florida ufologist named Roger Spencer Carr publicly alleged in 1974 that the Air Force was keeping two flying saucers of unknown origin within Wright Patterson's Hangar 18. Carr claimed to have a high-ranking military source who witnessed the autopsies on the bodies of 12 alien beings. Though Carr's assertions were doubtful, significant media coverage of them, as well as the release of the 1980 film Hangar 18, helped cement Wright Pat's legend as a hub of government UFO-related activity. When Blue Book was closed, the Air Force flatly lied to the American people, issuing a fact sheet claiming that no UFO had ever posed a threat to national security that UFOs did not represent technological developments or principles beyond the range of current scientific knowledge, and that there was no evidence that they were extraterrestrial vehicles. According to witness testimonies and official government accounts, a blazing red oval-shaped object hovered over Malmstrom Air Force Base in Montana in 1967, and all 10 of the facility's underground nuclear missiles were destroyed almost simultaneously while the UFO was present there was no conventional explanation that technicians could find. 
Regardless of what the Air Force told the public, it did not stop looking into UFOs. A previously classified memo, written covertly in October 1969, a few months before Blue Book was terminated, revealed that protocols were already in place to investigate UFO reports that were not part of the Blue Book system. According to the document, reports of UFOs that could affect national security would continue to be handled through the standard Air Force procedures designed for this purpose. Clearly, government agencies remained involved in UFO investigations in the decades that followed, and continue to do so today. Despite government denials, once secret official documents provide detailed reports of dramatic UFO incidents around the world. Many occurrences in the United States went uninvestigated, including a 2006 incident in which a disc-shaped object lingered over O'Hare Airport for more than five minutes before shooting straight up into the clouds. Scientists may have learned more about the behaviour and characteristics of UFOs and are getting closer to comprehending the physics of how the technology works. However, the government continues to make every effort to keep investigations and results secret while denying any involvement to American citizens. Let's hear what you think about Project Blue Book and Hangar 18 in the comments below.